So hi, uh, my name is Dan Bremen, and uh, I'm the director of Mike and Company Standards at Reagan Street, uh, around HL7 circles, actually known as the Wink Guy. So if you have one questions, uh, you're in the right spot, and uh, I'm happy to, uh, to answer any others that come up uh, throughout the course uh, of, the, uh, of the event. So um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how uh, Fire and Wink uh, work together. And uh, I like to think of it as sort of the, uh, the chips and salsa uh, metaphor, meaning fire is like the perfect delivery vehicle for content uh, that's coded uh, with one. So we're going to try to do three things today. Um, tell you just briefly a little bit about Boink. Uh, we're going to explore a little bit uh, places where you'll find Boink in, uh, in, in fire, and then uh, talk uh, more specifically about uh, features in the fire terminology services that are tailored for uh, for white content. Uh, as we get started, I just want to mention I uh, I wrote a book about one, uh, so I want to disclose uh, that. And uh, white funding is supported by a number of different sources, uh, federal uh, and uh, other nonprofit sources that one content from industry. So I want to get a sense uh, first of all just about you all, uh, who you are, uh, in relative to your knowledge about Wink. So, uh, how many would you say, I know very little about Wink, I'm totally new? All right, good. All right, about half. How many would say, I'm relatively new? I know a little bit, but, you know. Okay, good. And how many of you are advanced, uh, advanced electors? Okay, so if I get stuck, I'll call them again. Um, so, here we go. Uh, so I'm going to start by telling you just a little bit about Wink, and this will be helpful, I think, for, for those of you who are, are, are very new. Uh, I like to say, you know, it's like superhero origin story, uh, starting with uh, with Clem McDonald. So uh, if you don't use Wink, uh, you run into problems like this, which is you look across health system uh, health systems for something super common or even very rare, uh, like a diastolic blood pressure measurement. And these are from you know sort of 15 or so of the hospitals around where I'm from in central Indiana, and you see that that variable is stored and identified in all sorts of different ways. And clinicians who look at this are like, yeah, okay, I can tell you that those aren't sort of the same thing, but uh, the computer has a lot more difficulty with that. So this problem only gets worse uh, when you have more and more data sources. So some of you might remember the hip hop song from the mid 90s, "More Money, More Problems." I like to say uh, it's more data, more problems. So the more data you encounter, the more issues uh, you have. And uh, so what are some of the things that you encounter? Well, one is obviously um, it's, it can be difficult to exchange data, but that's the problem that fire solves. The second problem that you run into, though, is even once you start exchanging or interacting with data in a standardized way, those different systems are using different identifiers for the same concept. And so you got to have uh, data standards to, to solve that problem, and that's what Moink is for. So uh, Moink is a terminology standard specifically for a subset of the things in healthcare. It's specifically for uh, health measurements, observations, and collections of those things, such as what you might put into a document or a panel. And it covers sort of that, that span of uh, things all the way from uh, molecular pathology measurements uh, to observations that you might make about uh, someone's lifestyle or the environment that they're in, and then everything in between, which is what you might think of as normal uh, traditional clinical measurements like a hemoglobin A1C or a diastolic blood pressure, uh, head CT, and so forth. So, uh, so really, it's sort of this big catalog of standardized variables now that's about 84, uh, 84,000 different codes in life. But I want to point out, you know, the way in which Blink fits into other kinds of vocabulary standards that you might uh, be interacting with. And so you can, you can think of specifically Blink for uh, observables and collections of them, but recognizing that other kinds of data in healthcare, uh, you'll need to pull in other different kinds of vocabulary standards, such as SNOMED, uh, RxNorm, uh, and uh, potentially other uh, national code sets. So think of Blink as being focused on measurements. And uh, there's kind of two spaces of Blink that you might be familiar with. Uh, we divide that world of observation into these two categories. One is being lab stuff. So Blink's got a ton of codes uh, around laboratory tests. 
and that may be what uh, you're familiar with going for. But there's also a whole set of uh, other kinds of clinical measurements and observations, including uh, things that are becoming more and more uh, known today, used today, still electronically, such as patient referred outcomes measures uh, or other kinds of standardized assessment instruments, uh, document titles, uh, including radiology reports, uh, and so forth. So, but, so LUNC was designed actually specifically to fit into this context of data exchange in models uh, like HL7. So, uh, so the natural place that you'll find LUNC is the code that identifies the, uh, the observation uh, in a resource such as the observation resource or a, uh, a V2 OBX segment. And uh, it identifies that observation, recognizing that there's other information sort of surrounding that, such as the, uh, the observation value, which might be a numeric, or it might be a coded entity, and so forth. And so it defines terms, and that you'll, you'll want to be, uh, uh, you know, keep this in mind when we get to the later half of the session where we're talking about properties uh, in the terminology services stuff around like, but uh, so a linked term defines a particular test or measurement using a structured name that has six attributes. Uh, it assigns a code, that's the, the one code up at the top, that's a unique identifier. It's uh, non-semantic, a little check digit at the end. Uh, but the, the, the link name is composed of these, uh, these six <coughs> components, which is the analyte, the substance or thing that's being measured or observed. Uh, so in lab world, that's something uh, like an LDL cholesterol or glucose or whatever. Uh, there's the property, which is the specific uh, attribute of that component, that analyte that's being measured. So you've got a uh, designation here to separate between a mass concentration or a substance concentration, like millimoles per liter, uh, and, and so forth. There's a timing where that measurement is about a single instance in time or whether it's a, like a 24-hour urine collection. Uh, there's the system or the specimen, so what is the thing upon which that, that uh, observation is being made? So in what sample or what system is that in life being measured? So you've got different uh, codes for serum plasma or CSF and so forth. The scale, which indicates um, whether this observation is, say, quantitative or qualitative. So uh, there are ordinal, there's a different scale for ordinal or nominal results, but the expected answer is going to be drawn from a taxonomy, there's going to be some kind of ranked list, so present absence uh, or mild, moderate, severe, uh, that's designated in a scale, and then last is the method, which is a generic classification of how this measurement was performed. And we, in one, we try to only specify methods where there's a distinction that's important for uh, clinical interpretation, uh, we don't try to make very, very fine grained distinctions in methods, but it causes lots of trouble. Um, but there are example cases like this where people want to separate out the LDL that's a direct assay uh, from a calculated version and so forth. And that's, uh, that's where we specify that. Yeah. A question just kind of as an example to understand this uh, anatomy. If you had blood pressure measured like here versus on the toe. Yep. That could be indicated as a different component, as a different system, as, or as a different method. Yeah, so that would be uh, the site or location would be designated in the system. system. Right? Yep. Uh, blood pressure uh, would be the component, the thing you're measuring, and the, upon what is this being measured, the, thing, that the focus, the unit of analysis, so to speak, yep. would be the, the system. How would be a, the technique. Uh, that you're measuring it. So is it like is, you know an intravascular kind of thing, or is it a you know uh, uh, and so forth? Yeah. But I'll point out that of these things, the method is the only one that's optional. So not all lung terms have a method designated. Uh, and so here's a case for body height, where we're not saying what the method was. You could uh, use a variety of different techniques, and uh, and so you'll see a number of different terms that. Uh, to have that method as being uh, blank. So I mentioned like creases codes for individual observations, but then also codes for collections of them. So uh, in the lab world, you might call this a panel for a battery. Uh, and uh, so you would have uh, something like a CVC with auto diff. So one creates a code that has a structured 
connection between that phenol and the set of elements that, uh, that it contains, such as red blood cell count, white blood cell count, uh, and so forth. But these collections you can, you can create for several different kinds of purposes. So if you're uh, outside the lab, you're thinking of a clinical measurement or a uh, patient report outcome, you might be familiar with the PHP-9, which is a screening instrument for depression. And so we create a code that represents that instrument underneath which are hooked all the different individual questions that form uh, that instrument. Uh, in addition, uh, we use this idea of collection to describe things where there isn't a specific enumerated set of elements underneath it, but there's a general notion that it's collecting certain kinds of information. So, for example, uh, both the radiology reports and other kinds of clinical notes, you might consider a document as an information collection and when I say discharge summary, you probably have an idea in your head that there are certain sections, certain expected information, but in the terminology, we're not explicitly listing out, well, it must have all these 15 elements and these other, uh, these other ones and so forth. So we create codes that represent both sort of general collections of information. Those would be, for example, these documents, uh, as well as enumerated sets. And those, uh, we use the word panel uh, to describe those where they have a, uh, a distinguished set of uh, child elements underneath them. In addition to, to handle uh, situations like uh, these patient report outcomes measures, uh, we've built a connection between the observation or the question and uh, structured answer lists. And so there's a there's a, um, uh, an answer list structure where we can hook a link code to an answer list, and that list can be either externally defined as sort of uh, intentional or it can be uh, uh, actually enumerated with a set of uh, answer items underneath it. And uh, we, we have this structure where we give those answer strings an ID uh, and we can sort it out. But that way you can actually have um, the connection between that PHK-9 question and its expected answers which are, um, are sort of required for filling out that kind of form. So here's an example. We, we set the binding of those um, those answers with a couple of different types. We call them uh, sort of the association strengths. So here's an example from the more small scale uh, with a list that is identified as being normative. So we use uh, normative um, example and preferred connections, which means that if you're using this item, which is clinical status or the more small scale, you've got to be using this uh, list because it goes to that, that instrument itself. Um, so there's that connection between the observation code, which is the main link code, a list, and the items in that list. So uh, the link uh, release distribution has a whole bunch of different files sort of included in it. And depending on your use case, you might need more or less of them. So obviously there's like a main link table, which is a database, uh, you know, a CSV file or whatever that has a row for every link term. But then there are also sort of these specialized uh, versions which have connections to, for example, the answers, uh, connections to the panels and forms, which do that hierarchical organization uh, and so forth. And I'm not going to go through these in, in detail other than just mentioning that they're there and that they each have a, uh, a readme and release notes with them. So you want to be aware that Link has major releases twice per year in June uh, and December and that we're adding content because the user community asks for it. Um, so uh, basically all the new content that gets added to one is based on a request from, uh, from, the, from the community. One is distributed uh, under a license from the Brain Street Institute at no cost uh, worldwide, and, and that license is sort of good from now to the future. Uh, you can use one both in commercial and non-commercial purposes. Uh, there's a there's a, a sort of open policy around translation. We encourage that and, uh, and distribute Link in a number of different translations. There's one major thing you have to keep in mind uh, about the Link license, and that is you can't use Link or any of the sort of material we, we uh, develop around it to make another coding system, which uh, sort of defeats the purpose of having a standard in the first place. Um, but that's, so you can't take Link, delete all the Link codes, make up your own IDs and call it, you know, better terminology or whatever. That's uh, that's the thing that's the main prohibition in the one life. Uh, you're welcome to use it for lots of different things. 
And if you hang around uh, long, long enough, you're soon, you'll, you'll definitely encounter a pig. And you might be wondering what the heck is up with that pig. And basically, we've adopted the pig as our unofficial official mascot because loink sounds like loink. <laughs> the, uh, you know, the sound that the pig makes is, is what it is. So, uh, so there you go. All right. Um, let me just tell you briefly, you know, a little bit about where Lonk is today. And uh, there are about 55,000 uh, registered users of, of uh, Lonk, uh, and we're growing at about a pace of maybe 6,000 or so new ones per year. And those users are coming from about 170 different countries. There isn't necessarily a prototypical Lonk user, and that probably, if you went around the room and, and asked uh, what people's interests are, you would probably reflect some of this. Um, there are lots of different kinds of Lonk users. So certainly, uh, reference labs and radiology centers who are sending results out to uh, their customers, uh, like physicians and hospitals and so forth, are users, but, uh, but a lot of different other folks too. So uh, federal agencies, uh, professional societies, for example, who are building uh, registries and so forth, insurance companies, uh, as well as uh, some of the other folks listed here. It's now, an official national standard in probably 35 countries at my last count. You can see some of the, the countries listed uh, listed there. So in Fireworld, where might you spot a loink? Uh, I thought I'd give you a little bit of a, uh, a tour sort of uh, through some of the different places where you might encounter loink. So I'll start you know, in the diagnostic medicine module. So first, uh, as you might expect, uh, observation. <laughs> That's probably where you're gonna see a lot uh, of Lunks. And so Lunk is uh, probably the most widely used code system for observations. And uh, I've given sort of an example here of you know tr traditional way of reporting a numeric result. Um, this is a hemoglobin measure with uh, you know units uh, represented in UCA. Um, and so certainly uh, interacting with observation, that's exactly sort of what Lunk was designed for. And so there's lots of cool things that you can now do using Fire, for example. Okay, you know, give me back specifically the result for a particular uh, kind of test uh, for the patient that I'm interested in here by specifying you know, that patient and then looking for observations that have a code such as the, the one code for, uh, for hemoglobin. If you're uh, more clever, you can do uh, some reverse chaining and say, okay, how could I find all the patients who have uh, a particular kind of observation? In this case, you know, that same hemoglobin one. So you can do reverse chaining and say, um, you know, I'm looking for patients where that uh, observation uh, 718-7 <coughs> is, is present and what you'll get back is a list of patient resources um, for that have that observation stored. So I showed you that example of like a numeric result. It works the same way if you're going to use a, uh, an observation that has a coded answer. So uh, in this case, I, I chose a, a, a term where the observation is about the metabolic activity of um, the CYP2C9 gene product. And uh, you're recording that that metabolic activity is like a normal metabolizer, um, high metabolizer, and so forth. And instead of a numeric value uh, in the value here, you've got a codable concept, and you could use the link answer code, the LA code, uh, that represents a uh, normal metabolizer there. Uh, so it works the same way for, uh, for coded observations. Today, uh, there are a couple of different profiles that have been developed in various stages of maturity uh, on observation where there's a more uh, explicit binding to, uh, to one content. And so there's a number of uh, uh, profiles related to genetics uh, which are each tied to a, a sort of a specific one code. So as an example, um, there's a profile on uh, uh, amino acid change type, and that uh, observation profile is connected to a specific one code, 48006-1, and if you pull up that code in one, you'll see uh, it has a uh, defined sort of answer list, it's connected to an answer list, uh, which is what uh, this profile is looking at as well, and it's for specifying whether it's a wild type uh, or a deletion, uh, and so forth, at the, at the amino acid level there. Similarly, there's a set of profiles for observations, 
uh, of vital signs that are connected to uh, specific types of one codes. And I uh, encourage you to look at this profile if you haven't already. It has sort of a unique structure where there's sort of a generic called magic one code uh, at the top level that could be connected to some uh, more specific one codes for, uh, for the same kind of um, observation. So I'll take body height as, as an example where there might be some more specific uh, positional codes or, or method codes uh, that you could map to this more generic one. But every, uh, every vital sign about body height has this magic code uh, at the top. So moving on just from some generic observations, uh, you, you could also use Blank inside uh, the goal resource if what you're doing is trying to, to establish a goal uh, for like a target measure, say I want to have uh, my body weight within a particular range, and that's a goal that you want to record in your picture record, uh, you can use in, inside of that statement uh, a one code about, about the measurement of interest. So a diagnostic report, uh, which is sort of this collection of findings and, and interpretation of diagnostic texts, um, you'll also see uh, one used in a couple different ways. So, a uh, diagnostic report has some mix of both atomic elements, uh, images, uh, text or coded interpretations, and so forth. And it's used for, uh, for lab stuff, for radiology, other diagnostic services like cardiology, and so forth. And, uh, and, and one of the sort of preferred set of codes to represent these diagnostic reports. And so, uh, as you uh, might recall, you know, the, the idea of a collection uh, is something that uh, that one represents, and so uh, if you're talking about, say, a lipid panel, um, you might have uh, that panel code to be at the top, and then underneath you're expecting a certain collection uh, of results. For example, there should be a cholesterol, triglyceride, HDL, and so forth. And those two might have one codes, but at the top level, uh, you have a one code for that collection, which is a lipid. Specifically for those of you interested in imaging study things, I thought I'd mention uh, how uh, one kind of can relate there as well. So something like a diagnostic report can point to uh, imaging study, and the report is the, the, the report would have sort of that uh, the, the narrative and some key images and so forth. Um, but imaging study is the information that's on a DICOM, a DICOM imaging study would have a series imaging objects and so forth. And uh, LIFE has worked together with the RSNA, the Radiological Society of North America, uh, to harmonize our two different approaches for representing uh, radiology studies into a single unified approach that's based with the one code as a primary ID, but kind of a connection between the one attributes and the, the RSNA uh, RADLEX terminology. Uh, and uh, this set is uh, named or recommended uh, in, for example, the DICOM uh, structured reporting, like the CDA-based reporting, and the consolidated CDA uh, diagnostic uh, imaging set. Uh, th this collection of one codes is, is what you could use for, uh, for example, PET CT, you know, wrist X-ray, and, uh, and so forth. And so there's a whole set of uh, codes uh, that represent those things. But you might find Link in other places as well. So, uh, for example, uh, this questionnaire uh, and response stuff, I mentioned uh, Link has a whole set of codes around that variable as well. I just want to mention uh, a quick sample. Uh, no, we don't actually have our own line, uh, but that is sort of on my list of you know goals at some point. Um, but uh, there's like 10,000 or so variables in Link uh, that represent patient assessment items and um, we're adding more all the time. So if you're building uh, questionnaire stuff, you might look at Link as a, as a, as a collection to, to, to reference. Um, so in composition, uh, with this <coughs> you've got the structure that builds uh, fire documents. And uh, I mentioned that uh, Link has a real rich set of clinical document type codes, as well as section codes, uh, both of which are used extensively in CDA. So you'll find them in the sort of analogous structures here, uh, here in FIRE. Data element is probably uh, one of the last places I'll talk about. And, and uh, so data element is where you'll have um, a, a definition of sort of the, the collection of information around uh, an observation. 
that could be something uh, requested or performed. There could be these questions and forms. And Loink has a lot of sort of metadata around its questions, which sort of map uh, directly to the different elements in, uh, in a data elements. Um, and so uh, you could think of Loink as like a primary identifier for possibly a lot of the, uh, the data element definitions if that's uh, a resource you want to use. Uh, but certainly data element can constrain or define uh, a lot of additional elements that are not part of the terminology itself. Um, last, uh, if you're working with consent forms, as part of the, uh, the document stuff in one, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of consent document terms. So as we wrap up, I want to cover a few of the cool uh, one specific features uh, in the FHIR terminology uh, services space. So, the first thing I'll point out is uh, that you can visit the, the, the link page that describes this, and I'll kind of give you the highlights here. So, the, so one thing to note is uh, I mentioned you know, link terms, uh, link answer lists and codes, and uh, for all the identifiers that link creates, uh, when you're referring to those, you'll want to use the, the, the URI that's shown here. They, they all come from the sort of same, uh, same space. And when you're uh, working with like terms, like codes, um, you might wonder, well, which, what name should I use? So if I show you the formal name, that structured name, that's a little bit cumbersome to put together into uh, your record for the term. And so instead, we sort of recommend, for the most part, you use the long common name, which would be a, uh, a, dis a, a nice uh, display name for that, uh, for that term. Uh, in addition, there's ways to uh, obviously indicates uh, active or inactive status, and uh, the, the model force assumption in the terminology services of a flyer is based on the, uh, the LOINC uh, multi-axial hierarchy definition. So uh, if you're working with LOINC and you want to say, okay, give me all the details of, that, the, that the server has about that LOINC term, you can make a, a specific request that says, you know, using uh, code systems, so LOINC is a code system, okay, look up, and then give it to the, the identifier for that code, and it'll bring back uh, all, the, all the gory details. So quick note um, about uh, legal stuff. So there's one part of the license uh, that is uh, described, uh, but uh, is partly related to um, our, uh, uh, our, the one license itself, which is um, if you're building a value set or making other web accessible artifacts available that have one codes, you have to include this little copyright notice. So there's a copyright element uh, in in Flyer where you can stick this little uh, this little statement. If you're just ex if you're exchanging observations, you don't need to do this. But for example, if you're publishing a document or a spec um, or a value set based on one, you uh, include this little attribution statement there. So. Uh, within the terminology services space, there's some cool things you can do with one parts, which are the coded representation of those fully specified uh, name attributes. So we give parts a code that have an LP prefix, so it's like LP 15491-1, and we use those parts uh, for a couple different things within Link. One of them is to, to organize the multi-axial hierarchy, um, but you can use them uh, within Fire to do things such as uh, setting up uh, specific uh, filter properties, uh, or if you wanted to uh, leverage some of the mappings that we have between uh, link parts and say SNOMED or RADLAX or ARCH norm, you could use them in, uh, in concept map. So for example, if I wanted to say get all the link codes, uh, the terms that are under a particular part from the multi-axial hierarchy, uh, you can do that using the value set um, uh, mechanism. And so uh, you can use the, for that generic identifier of link.org slash vs for value set and the part code. And if I ask the branch server uh, to expand that value set, uh, it'll pull back the list of codes that fit underneath that node of the, of the hierarchy. So that was a, an example of uh, the part for LDL cholesterol. And if I run that expand thing, you'll get back the list of one codes uh, that have that, uh, that part uh, as, the, uh, as the component there. So we talked about answer lists. And uh, answer lists are effectively uh, value sets that can be used for the results of an ordinal or nominal one term. 
and we give the list itself a code, an LL prefix, uh, and that file that I talked about, the one answer file, one of those artifacts, specifies the binding between a particular observation code and a list, as an example of preferred and normative. And I mentioned there are some lists that are uh, for the references out, so if the list is all of ICD-9, we don't include that in one, uh, but if the list is mild, moderate, severe, we can enumerate that in one, and so some are that fully uh, enumerated thing, and we give those codes uh, up for the answer strings and a code that starts with LA uh, for length answer. So you can get uh, the length answer list as a value set using sort of that same uh, value set expand uh, model. And here uh, it's you know length.org VS, and then you put the LL code, the, the answer list code in, and uh, Graham server will return back uh, that, uh, that collection of answers as an expanded value set. So here is the example that I was talking about this. Uh, this, this. This code that's related to a real type, and you'll get back um, you know, the, the collection of LA codes uh, and their, uh, their display names there. So the main terminology properties uh, that are defined are, are the ones that I described earlier as being some of the main attributes of the name, so the component property time, system scale, method, and then a handful of others, such as the class, you know, micro or serology, uh, and so forth. And you can use all of these uh, to do different things, including building, building some value sets based on those like properties. So pretend uh, that we wanted to make a value set of all the like uh, body type terms that were about the patient. And I didn't mention earlier, but like as a way to represent uh, observations that are stored in somebody's record, but they're about somebody else. Uh, so if you're the, uh, the infant and you want to record something about your mother, but it's actually stored in the infant's record, there's a little reference pointer uh, that we call the super system. We don't want that in this case. We just want uh, body measurements about the patient. So you can say, okay, include in my value set those that have component of body height, the property of length, and that they're about the patient. We're not going to do any other exclusions. And when you build your value set, you can use those properties uh, to specify what terms from length uh, you want to include uh, include in. <coughs> and so then, uh, if you if you build that value set and then expand it out, you'll see that that uh, can include all these different things, which might, uh, for example, have uh, you know codes that are different because one is just a generic body height, one is an estimated version, and one is what the patient stated, one is what we actually measured. Uh, but this value set sort of can bring all those uh, observations together in one. So as another example, you might say, okay, maybe I want to uh, collect all the different uh, glucose measurements. And uh, you know that there are several different, lots of different codes actually uh, in like, but I want to have those that are comparable in some sense because their mass concentrations are done in some uh, blood or blood subtypes, like arterial blood or venous blood. But I want to exclude uh, the maybe like blood spot terms and the uh, uh, the uh, capillary blood uh, from my uh, from my set. So you can set these all up as part of your value set filter, both exclusion and then <coughs> uh, inclusion criteria there, and uh, the set will expand out to include just the terms uh, that uh, that you want. Last out here, so I'll give you an example of a document type thing. So I mentioned Link has lots of different codes for document types, uh, and uh, there's a whole sort of syntax around how those are defined. And uh, one of them includes the subject matter domain, and another is the type of service. So uh, say that I want to pull back all of the sports medicine uh, subtype documents, but I don't care whether it was initial evaluation note, progress note, or any other kind of thing. And so here I can build a value set that includes all the one terms that have just sports medicine as a method and that are of a document. And I'll get back, um, I'll get back those those uh, those terms uh, if I expand that list. So in wrap up, I will say there's one kind of important uh, work in progress to be aware of, and that is the uh, 
the definition of a canonical representation of Blanca is a fire code system. So this is uh, sort of the basis of what that, uh, that page that I showed earlier from fire is, is based on. But we have uh, some work to define an expanded set uh, of properties. And uh, this specification is available from the link website at the URL here. And uh, the goal is that uh, this will be sort of the reference definition of if you're going to put Link as a code system in your Fire technology server. Here's the set of things and how you want to uh, how you want to define that. So take on lesson. Link helps uh, make uh, clinical data more uh, understandable. And if you combine that with Fire, you'll uh, you'll have a lot of benefit. So thanks. Display name is always English or is it translated by different countries? Or? So the, there's uh, so every one term has an English uh, display name, mm -hmm. and uh, there are foreign language translations of many, but not all. So there are today there are 18 uh, variations of 12 different languages for the link, but not all translate all terms. Uh, so there's a there's a separate file that you can get those translated display names. But just be aware that doesn't cover every term because uh, in some jurisdictions, not all terms are appropriate. Um, so in terms of the multi-actual hierarchy, if we're implementing a, a multi-server and want to expose that, yeah. whereabouts in this condition can we find that? And is yeah. that changing? Or? Uh, let's see. So there's a specific file. And I'll just bring up that list of... There's a specific file called, I think, the multi-axial hierarchy file. So it's a, um, it's a file that has sort of three sheets. One defines the parent-child relationships, uh, and there's a path enumeration there for how to get to the top. And at the bottom of that, so the leaf nodes are one term. <coughs> the intermediate structures are typically part codes. And it's, as of last release, does it have a spot for every one term. Uh, some are at kind of a pretty high level, uh, but they should all be 